an ancient Chinese emperor, Guangwu of the Han Dynasty, was given signs of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Not only was he given signs, he was able to interpret them correctly as signifying the salvation of all mankind. This is absolutely incredible stuff, and I cannot wait to share it with you all today. But first, a shout out to Stephen Welp, a member of our community, for helping us research this topic. Now, Emperor Guangwu was a well-known historical figure. He served as Emperor of the Han Dynasty, restoring it in AD 25, thus founding what historians now call the later Han Dynasty. He ruled over parts of China at first, but the whole of China was consolidated by him by the time of his death in AD 57. That kind of puts him in a league with other monarchs of his time who ruled vast empires, you know, guys like Augustus Caesar, whom you have heard of. He was a big deal. Guangwu isn't a minor king. But what makes him interesting to us today is that he observed astronomical signs of the death and resurrection of Jesus and properly interpreted these signs. Luckily, Guangwu dated the entries of his chronicles. The first one was dated from the seventh year of his reign. As we saw earlier, he first took power in AD 25. That plus seven years makes the seventh year AD 32, right? Well, no. Like many emperors, they counted the year of their reigns from the first complete year. So the seventh year of his reign would actually be AD 33. This is important. Wait till you see why. The entry was also made in April of that year, April 33 AD. It reads, quote, Yin and Yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. End of quote. This comes from the History of the Later Han Dynasty, Volume 1, Chronicles of Emperor Wangwu, 7th Year. If you are a Christian, I'm sure this is absolutely astounding to you. As a believer, you know that Jesus' death on the cross laid the sins of the whole world on one man, on Jesus, and that he bought salvation for all under heaven with his blood, for all who will call upon his name. The question is, how did Wu know that? We'll conjecture on that in a bit. But first, let's look at what events are known to have taken place in April of 33 AD, specifically on April 3rd, 33 AD. This date was Nisan 14 on the Hebrew calendar. It was the beginning of Passover, the day that the lambs were slaughtered. Yeah, you're starting to get the picture. This might be an important day. On that day, according to NASA calendars, a full lunar eclipse, a blood moon, rose in the sky at the exact moment of sundown. That much is known. That much is historic. But what if this was the day of Jesus' crucifixion? We know that it was Nisan 14. We just don't know the year. But let's suppose Jesus was crucified on Nisan 14, 33 AD. Was there a lunar eclipse that night? Guangwu says there was both a solar and lunar eclipse in one day. The Apostle Peter says there was as well in Acts chapter 2. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, by miracles, and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. That's Acts 2, 20 through 22. Peter says the people of Jerusalem knew the sun and moon were darkened that day. The sun was darkened supernaturally from noon to 3 p.m. The moon was darkened as a blood moon in a natural eclipse. Not only did Jerusalem see this, but Guangwu was obviously aware of it too, and wrote about it in his royal chronicles. It's physically impossible for a solar and lunar eclipse to happen on the same day. The reason why is either the moon covers the sun, which is a solar eclipse, or 
the shadow of the earth covers the moon, which is a lunar eclipse. So you just can't have them both happen in the same day. The people of Jerusalem and the people of China all knew this. So when they saw both, they knew it was a divine sign. Guang Wu, however, didn't know all the signs that occurred that day in Jerusalem. There was also a great earthquake. The veil of the temple was torn in two and the tombs were opened. Later, on the Hebraic Feast of First Fruits, the dead would come out of their tombs and walk right into Jerusalem to be seen by many. But even though Guang Wu didn't know these extra details, he correctly identified what happened. Here, let's listen to what he said. Quote, Yin and Yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. End of quote. Yin and Yang is that symbol that's half white and half black. You've seen it. So if they are switched, it means darkness is switching places with light. And this is exactly what took place on the cross when Jesus, the righteous one, took our sins upon himself and gave his righteousness to those who would believe on his name. Darkness switched places with light. Guang Wu further understood that the sins of all the people would be placed on one man and that the pardon was proclaimed to all under heaven. How did he know these things and write about them 2,000 years ago? He did not have a missionary tell him. On that day, the very first missionaries, the disciples, were hiding in an upper room. They were scared for their lives. There were no missionaries to tell Guang Wu. It would be decades before the first missionaries would make it into China and speak there of Jesus. So there is only one possible solution. God told Guang Wu what the sign meant. He told him through the Holy Spirit, kind of making him a prophet. How is that possible? He, he wasn't a believer, was he? We'll explain all that in just a bit. Now, this eclipse impacted Guang Wu. His chroniclers also wrote this, quote, In the day of Guihai, the last day of the month, there was a solar eclipse. The emperor avoided the throne room, suspended all military activities, and did not handle official business for five days. End of quote. History of the Later Han Dynasty, Volume 1, Chronicles of Emperor Guang Wu, 7th year. And they also wrote this. Wait till you hear this one. Quote, Eclipse on the day of Guihai. Man from heaven died. History of Later Han Annals, Number 18, Guihai. The emperor knew that a man from heaven had died. Absolutely incredible. They knew that the eclipse placed the sin of the whole world on one man, a man from heaven, and that he had died. Now, Peter had to verbally explain this to the audience in Jerusalem. Therefore, let the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Christ Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off. Could that be Guang Wu? As many as the Lord will call. Were some of those he would call, the emperor and some of the other Chinese? Well, we aren't sure. We won't know until Jesus returns. But there was one more entry in the Chronicles of Guang Wu, one that is not recorded in the Bible. Three days after the solar darkening, what he called an eclipse, the emperor had this recorded. During the reign of Emperor Guang Wu, on the day of Bing Yin of the fourth month, a halo, a rainbow, encircled the sun. History of Later Han, Annals number 18, Guihai. It appears that Christ's resurrection also caused the celestial event that was observable, a rainbow encircling the sun. Now in the book of Revelation, this same sign is seen. A mighty angel, who many, including me, 
believe is Jesus has this same sign, a rainbow halo around his head. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. Revelation 10.1 Did the emperor see Jesus ascend that day? The man with a rainbow encircling his face like the sun. Now, we don't know, but it is really cool to consider that maybe he did. This sign has also been seen recently. On March 6, 2021, the citizens of Hulanbergerga, and please don't even ask me to pronounce that again, city in Inner Mongolia observed this same sign a sun halo or solar halo. Another circular rainbow around the sun was seen over Bretton Woods, New Hampshire on February 13th, 2021. I can at least pronounce that one. Interesting. However, how did the emperor know the interpretation of these signs? How did he know a man from heaven died and took the sin of the whole world on himself and that a pardon was available for the whole world worldwide? These aren't things you can assume simply from some astronomical sign. No, as we said, he had to have been told by the Holy Spirit. There is no other way. But how did the emperor's assistants have the Holy Spirit? Were they believers? Maybe they were. The ancient Chinese characters, with most called kanji characters today, are very old, maybe 4,000 years old. And shockingly, they appear to have been based on accounts from the book of Genesis. Not only that, they worshipped one god, Shangdai, sounds similar to Shaddai, as in El Shaddai, which is a name of God. Did the ancient Chinese worship the one true God, and is that reflected in their written language? We have a series of videos on that exact topic. Click right here to see the first episode about how these kanji characters in the ancient Chinese ceremonies come right out of the book of Genesis. This is Nelson. You can tell I'm excited. And I'll see you there.